CEO Ronald Hicklin from Creating the Difference. I want to talk to you about hardness and the Purple Hammer Urethane Bowling Ball. I've got a Purple Hammer Urethane Bowling Ball here, and I also have a durometer that is very similar to, this, to the setup that USB-C has. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about hardness and kind of how it impacts your bowling ball as it relates to temperature. USB-C, about two months ago, did a whole research paper on this, and we'll actually post a link uh, at the bottom to, so you can actually be able to read the whole paper if you're interested. But what they found was that conventional urethane balls, like the Purple Hammer, actually will fluctuate in hardness more so than the traditional reactive ball. USB-C also has a testing range that they recommend to be able to check bowling balls in. And that range initially was 68 to 78 degrees, and now as a result of their research study, it's now 70 to 77 degrees. That is the range at which they're gonna do the testing on bowling balls. They also figured out that bowling with the bowling ball can impact the durometer rating, oil on the bowling ball can impact the durometer rating, and obviously that there is variability in durometers. So we're gonna do our own little experiment here and kind of show you kind of how that temperature can impact the bowling ball. So we got this bowling ball here. I have a temperature gun. We're gonna take the temperature of this bowling ball. This bowling ball happens to be at 70.9 degrees. So it's within their range and we'll check the durometer of it right now. That's 72. A new spot on the ball. 73. That one's 74. There's a 75. And what they would do is they'd actually do 10 different measurements and then get an average. And that looks like it's about 76, 77. So at the end of the day, all the measurements that we're getting on this bowling ball are legal, would be considered legal by USB-C. Now you say, okay, that's fine. You know, I've heard some speculation about this bowling ball. You know, what is, what, how do you know? Well, unless you have a device like this, there's no way for you to know anyway. So very few people have this device, probably all the ball manufacturers and somebody like myself, because I'm very interested in this kind of stuff. But these things are expensive, man, They're like two grand. So very few people actually have these, but nonetheless, we're gonna check this bowling ball. This is another one of these purple hammers, all right? Looks fine, looks normal, except when we put the heat gun on it, this one's actually measuring at 101.7. So this ball's obviously very hot. So because of that, um, we're gonna check the temp check the durometer and see where this ball kind of ends up at. Now watch, this is gonna be kind of interesting. So it's actually measured at 68, but if you look at the durometer, it's actually continuing to go down, okay? Get a new spot on the ball. 68 and then once again it's going down now what's actually happening here is this bowling ball because it's soft when we poke that needle which is what's at the bottom of this end of the ball the bowling ball is soft so it actually contacts the ball and the ball softens up so the number will continue to go down actually because the ball is so soft same thing one more time just so we can have a fair test still illegal now what this means is a couple things. One, this ball in this condition would be considered illegal, but it's not illegal according to the rules because the USB-C rules would not allow you to test the ball at this temperature, right? The ball's gotta be between 70 and 77 degrees. And when you check it at 70 to, 70, 70 to 77 degrees, it's legal, so the ball would be legal. Now here's the other thing. If you let this ball sit long enough, let it go back to room temperature, uh, keep it clean, check it again, you'll be able to see that the ball will go back uh, to that legal limit range, which is what the whole purpose of uh, the spec is for. So a lot of times people are confused by what's going on and can say, hey, my bowling ball, I, I was able to hear that these bowling balls are soft. Well, they can be soft, that's the truth, but not during the actual test. I also know for a fact that USB-C has spent their time and money going and checking bowling balls, not just the ones that are initially submitted, but also balls in the field. And to date, no bowling ball has, has been below that 72D limit. So all the balls that we're throwing at, that have been checked, all the bowling balls that are coming out and are being approved are also being checked, they're all legal, which that is why we pay USB-C to do their job. They're the ones that are in charge to make sure no one has an unfair advantage and they make sure no company has an unfair advantage because they are the ones that help to set these specifications and do all the testing. Now, we're gonna do one more little test just because we have it here. I happen to have a plastic ball. This happens to be the CTD 
uh, spare ball that we got, we're gonna check it because hardness can matter. This is a polyester ball compared to a urethane ball. We'll check the temperature. This bowling ball is a nice 74.1, so it's within the spec. And when we go to check it, it's a whopping 87 hardness. This bowling ball is hard. It's a spare ball. It's meant to go straight. Having a hardness that's really high, high like that is going to help that bowling ball to be able to go dead straight. So now you have a little bit more information. Like I said, we'll drop that link in there if you want to read the whole study that they did. It's pretty cool if you're into that kind of stuff. But if not, you now have the gist as to how bowling balls can be checked. And not only that, but how bowling balls that we are actually using in competition, they can actually change while you're bowling. As always, if you have more questions or need more information, make sure you check us out at ctdbowling.com. Ronald Hicklin, CEO from Creating the Difference. Have a great day.